Today's review is focusing on Vortex at King's Island. This is an aerodynamics custom looping roller coaster. I'm going to be giving my full thoughts on it in today's video. As usual, let's start with the stats. It sits at a height of 148 feet, making it one of the taller custom loopers out there. It has a drop of 138 feet. This is not a curved drop. However, it does not go straight into the drop from the lift hill. You do detach from the lift and go over a little turn. Its maximum angle of descent is 55 degrees, and it also has a 55 mile per hour maximum speed. And that is, of course, reached at the bottom of the first drop. You're going through six inversions on this ride, two vertical loops, two corkscrews, and a bat wing. And this is a large ride, so you're going to travel over 3,800 feet of track in a 2 minute and 30 second ride time. And this is a pretty well-known ride. When people think of Kings Island, this is going to be one of the roller coasters that pops into their head. It is large, it is right out in the open so everyone can see it. And it's not the best ride in the world, but I wouldn't say it's bad either. Now, I only got to ride this ride once. I rode it in the magic seat at night. So, my view of it is probably going to be a lot different than someone who rides in the front seat during the day. I thought it was nowhere near as bad as other custom loopers out there, like Anaconda at King's Dominion. I found it to be fairly smooth for the most part. I didn't find it to be super jerky or rough. Again, if you're sitting in a different seat, then you might find it to be rough, but I don't know. I'm just speaking based off of my experience. Now, I wouldn't say that this has the greatest layout in the world. I think it's pretty weird how the ride doesn't go straight into the vertical loops. It actually goes into this elevated turn, then into the first inversion. I think that's kind of odd. Not bad odd, but just kind of weird. And I don't know if I'd say that this is a super thrilling ride either. It's just kind of your classic inverting sedan coaster. Every park has one, so to me, that's just what this ride is. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have the greatest experience on this ride. Though I was in the right seat riding it at night, I thought the actual coaster was fine. But those who follow me on social media know that this is the ride that actually broke my sunglasses. This happened, I think, during the Helix section. What happened was they were in my pocket, and I guess the ride was too jerky, and so my body slammed into the side and actually broke them into three pieces. I don't have anything against the ride for doing that. That was probably stupid on my part. But at the same time, it shows that this ride can be violent. And if I was sitting in the best seat on the train, then I wonder what it'd be like in the back row. Now, there are lots of good things about this ride. It's got great capacity. It's a long ride. Gotta love that. A lot of these rides, we complain about how they're too short. The ride length of this is perfect. It's under 4,000 feet of track, but because you aren't going super fast through it, it feels like a longer ride. Now, that is including the slow chain lift that you go up. But I also love how this ride looks. Whether you're actually going to ride it or not, when you walk by this ride, this thing is in your face. It's a very fun ride to just sit there and watch. When I was at the park, I got some food and I sat by one of the tables and just watched the coaster go. Now, in terms of where to compare this coaster to some of the other rides in the park, I would say Firehawk is better than it. Maybe even the Bat. I'd have to think about that one. So I don't love this ride, but it's not a bad aero coaster either. It's definitely one of the better custom loopers. So for the final score, I'm going to give this coaster a 7.5. Again, I think it would depend on if I got to experience this during the daytime and maybe sat in a different seat. But based off of my experience, I didn't think it was terrible, but I also didn't love it. It was just fine. So make sure to post it in the comments below what you think about Vortex at King's Island. Make sure to stay tuned for more coaster reviews, and you can also check out past coaster reviews I've done which are available on my channel in alphabetical order based off of the ones that I've written. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I will catch you guys next time.